We discussed this poll while it was being put together. Are you surprised, first of all, by 50% of Americans saying no football for their kids if they have them? Or have Mildly. Them? I thought it would be higher. Really? Yes. I thought it would be higher because of the uh, increase in knowledge and awareness of the concussion protocols among high school kids. Uh, if you have a high, son in high school, sophomore, junior, playing high school football, uh, he suffers a concussion. You can see a visible impact in his study habits and his academics. Uh, attention deficit disorders arise from concussions. And then the next step, college. It hurts, impairs his ability to go on to college, and parents become acutely aware of that. I thought it would be higher. NFL is meeting today, trying to figure out its next steps forward. You think they look at those poll numbers and, and worry, or they don't care? Absolutely not. There's no, <laughs> there's no worry going on here. You know, I mean, we had the same conversation with the concussion settlement. We had the same conversation with the Ray Rice and Adrian Peterson scandals. People are still watching football, no matter how much, uh, how much more data comes out about how, how dangerous it might be or how many bad things get associated with it. And frankly, I would actually really like to see a regional breakdown of this poll. Uh, while the income breakdown is interesting, you know, the, the, the pipeline of talent towards the NFL really only comes from Pennsylvania, Texas, um, Florida, and California. So I'd like to see how parents in those percentage of states... NFL players come from those four states? Uh, I don't know the exact percentage, but the New York Times did a really great map showing that it was the vast majority. Um, and, and I would like, like to see how those parents pr particularly feel. Well, you know, Kavitha makes a good point, and it's a point that uh, Will Leach, our sports guy, wrote about when he wrote about this poll. He said, look, um, the, the, the NFL largely relies on uh, people, kids from families that make less than $50,000 a year. It's not a lot of kids of uh, Wall Street traders or uh, high-priced uh, pundits who uh, end up going on playing in the NFL. So does that demographic thing give the NFL reason to like not worry about the supply of good players that will come up and eventually reach it? Or does the overall number, 50%, make you worry a little bit about the fact that there might be a tipping point on this front? I don't think the I don't think the NFL is worried at all. As long as the SEC is playing football, the NFL does not worry. That's the pipeline from the SEC from college football right into the National Football League. Television, I think, will give them increasing uh, awareness of, of there's a worry out there. Not because people will stop watching. I agree with you. People will continue to watch in great numbers. But the increasing sophistication of the technology and the slow mo pictures of violent collisions on kickoffs, parents shudder when they see this and they repeat it over and over and over again on the telecast of, of games. Wow, look at this hit. I mean, the violence is an aphrodisiac for, for the telecasters. They love it, they want more of it, they show more of it, and it's scary. As best you can tell, does the NFL think it has a PR problem or a substance problem right now? Uh, I think it's a PR problem. I think that the NFL's reaction to every scandal, every step of the way, has been kind of retroactively trying to address the marketing and the way that they're being perceived in the public and not to actually institute any kind of real change. And that's why the power is still totally concentrated at the top and we still have the problems that we always have had. So the question I have for, for, for both of you is, what happens when the thing that I keep waiting for and that I think is a moment, will be a moment conceivably in the sport, is when someone gets hit on the field and dies on national television, on Monday Night Football, in the middle of a Sunday game. Um, what Does that not have some potential to, it certainly was the case in boxing, which we'll talk about in a minute, but does that not have the potential to create a moment where everyone says, hey, wait a minute, this is televised barbarism, we can't have this happen, and, and there's a, a national turning away from the screen. Is that possible? I think it is possible, but uh, it, it would take something as drastic as that because the, cum the, cu the cumulative effect of everything that we've seen adds up to more than that one drastic thing, and yet we're able to kind of dismiss it uh, as, as a public and say, well, that's, you know, these are you know, personal responsibility choices, and people know the, uh, the safety concerns that are, that are involved in playing football, and they still, they still go out and do it and players still under report there's still a whole mentality here that we need to overcome uh, aside from just educating the public on the actual dangers what do you think about that I think it's possible unfortunately that a player could die on the field because of the violence of the collisions you have six four six five inch guys weighing 280 to 300 pounds running 4.240s and it, it's like two superhuman it's like two nuclear missiles hitting each other at midfield I think it's possible that a player could die I don't think it will result in a diminishment in the popularity of the National Football League because it's live sports programming and it comes to you in the comfort of your big screen TV. When you go to ballparks and go to these suites, yeah. which are filled with rich people, yeah. they don't watch the game. They watch it on the big screen TV in the suite. Are any owners 
potentially going to break ranks here and say to the rest, their fellow owners and the commissioner, we got more than a PR problem? Yeah, I think there probably are a couple of owners. I, I, think, I think Robert Kraft of the Patriots is socially aware enough uh, uh, of things like this that he would be, I think, among the first to say, hey, wait a minute, we've got, we got a, a problem here. Let's take a look at it more so than they have been up to this point. Right. Let me press the argument just, just a slight just a step further. I've always thought that there was some possibility that there was a parallel. I mentioned boxing a second ago, right? I mean, people forget that um, certainly back uh, when you had people like Rocky Marciano and Jack Dempsey and people like that, it was one of the most popular sports in America. And much more recently, you got Muhammad Ali, maybe the greatest sports hero in American history, huge ratings for, for heavyweight prize fights just, you know, 30, 40 years ago. And now it is basically a, it's just a step above cockfighting. It's like, there's still a, an audience for boxing, but not much, and it's it's a niche sport, right? So why is that not? Why is that pop, the thing that happened to boxing? Why could that not happen to the NFL? I think that. The NFL is just simply too big to fail at this point, unfortunately. But you have to also understand that, you know, while we think about the fall of boxing in these kinds of romantic terms that we, you know, rejected this very violent sport and saw it for what it actually is, it was also very corrupted by gambling. And people kind of also lost faith in what they were watching. And that hasn't happened with football. Uh, and it happened a little bit with baseball, but obviously not not too much. So, uh, you know, there, there, there needs to be something more, apparently, than, uh, than the actual on-field dangers to deter people people from watching. Football could ever be boxing, yes or no? No, no. I mean, boxing, the demographics is entirely different. I mean, Benny Perrette dies in the ring. No viewer of that match could envision Benny Perrette living down the street. You can envision, because they supposedly go to college, NFL players living down the street.